So in the last video, we talked about reference. Today, we are going to talk about function overloading. What is function overloading? Most of the times, it is a good idea to use different names for different functions. But sometimes, a set of functions are conceptually performing the same operation. For example, we write this function integer add in comma end. So this is a function to add two numbers. And let's say float add float. This is a function to add two float values. Although we are always learned in C language that if you have two functions, you'll have two different function names for those two functions. But in C++, you can use the same function name for n number of functions as long as your function signature is different. What do you understand by function signature? Function signature includes name of the function, number of parameters, types of parameter, and order of parameters. If you are using the same name, right, for two functions, they can also have the same return type, but their function signature must differ. So now signature includes name and these three things, right? Now that you are keeping the name same. So what should be different is either the number of parameters, types of parameters or order of parameters. Something has to be different. So I have one function int add which adds two integer. I have one function which adds two float. Then I have one function which adds three floats. So now these three are the functions with the same name but different signatures, right? So this phenomenon is called as function overloading, right? This is done when your functions are conceptually doing the same task. These all these three functions are basically adding some values. We would like to have the same name for them, right? So we can perform function overloading. Behind the scene, how your C++ compiler handles function overloading is, it does something called as name mangling. So what is name mangling? So internally, the compiler will add certain characters after or before the names of these functions. For example, this might be stored internally as add underscore one. This might be treated as add underscore two, add underscore three, something like that. So they will change the name before compiling it. But you don't know that this happens internally by compiler. And which characters are added Either they are added after the function name or before the function name is that depends on com that differs from compiler to compiler, right? So this is called as name mangling. So compiler internally make sure that the function names are actually different. If you want to prohibit certain function from being overloaded, right? Your C++ you have a feature a directive called as extern, right? And you have to mention it like this before the before you declare your function. extern c integer at int int. So this tells the compiler that it should treat this function as a function in C language, right? So in that case, this is invalid. You cannot overload that function once you mark it with this directive. In C++, there's one more great feature called as default arguments. So what are default arguments? in C++ and how they are specified. So imagine you are writing a, as I said, simple calculator program, right? And you want to provide a functionality to add two numbers. Later, you want to extend that functionality and say one can add three integers instead of two. And then the, let's say you want to extend that functionality to let users add up to four integers instead of just two, right? Now, one way to do it will be do function overloading. So you can just say int add int 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 a function to add three integers and then let's say int add int 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 that is a function to add four integers right. Now this will work but instead there's one more way you can do this in C++. When you declare your function this add function, right? You can do something like this. Integer, let's say n1, integer n2. Then you can say integer n3 equal to 0. 
integer n4 equal to 0 and this is your declaration now what you are doing is that you are assigning default value that is 0 to the last two parameters of your function right these are called as default arguments that means if user makes a call like this let's say x equal to add 5 comma 4 right so this 5 will be assigned to n1 4 will be assigned to n2 rest of n3 and n4 will be by default 0 so this will return let's say 9 instead you make a call like 5 4 3 5 will be assigned to n1 4 will be assigned to n2 and 3 will be assigned to n3 and this will supposedly return 12 by adding the three arguments you can also make a call like 5 4 3 2 right in that case 2 will be assigned to n4 and we shall get 14 as of the final result if we write that logic of adding the n1 n2 n3 and n4 and returning that value now the great thing is so this same function can can be used to make a calls like this now 5 4 y equal to add 5 4 3 then you can use it like z equal to add 5 4 3 2 right so three calls are possible for the same function so the same function is enabling you to add two integers three integers or four integers but there are some rules right to use default arguments in c so what are those rules rule number one your default arguments they must be from right to left sequentially what does that mean is that you cannot have a situation where n4 is default n3 is not default and your n2 is default this is not allowed all the default arguments must be the tailing arguments they must be in sequence from the end so either you can make uh, n4 and n3 default arguments you can make n4 n3 and n2 default arguments you can just make n4 as default argument or you can make n4 n3 n2 and n1 all of them default arguments but it cannot be like n4 default n3 normal n2 default n1 normal right? it there cannot be a breakage of sequence from right to left you have to declare default argument values in your function declaration so it cannot be done in your function definition you have to make this call while you are declaring your function not when you are actually defining your function like this so the function definition will be like this and also return n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus n4 here in the function definition you cannot make something like this n3 equal to 0 and n4 equal to 0 you cannot assign default values you have to do that in your function declaration and one last thing that you have to just it's obvious but you cannot make a call like this let's say 5 4 and you don't specify the first default argument and just specify 2 and expect that this will be automatically be 0 and this will be 2 no again the sequence has to be followed if you don't want to use the default value of n4 you can't use the default value of n3 either so you have to say 5 4 q 1 something like that right you can't break the sequence that's the one more thing